Hi, uh, my name is Sudipta Ghosh. I'm a partner in PwC and I've been working in a number of supply chain transformation initiatives. Today I'm joined with uh, Nitin Sondele, uh, my uh, colleague and fellow partner who is uh, looking after the supply chain transformation initiatives uh, with me. We know that uh, supply chains are becoming more and more complex uh, going forward and uh, this complexity is coming from multiple factors um, uh, and some of them are complexity in the type of products we are uh, taking to our customers and, uh, and also uh, looking at um, a lot of changes which are happening from a customer preferences perspective and also changes in terms of uh, how we are going to the market uh, in, in a more coordinated way. Now all these are adding to a significant amount of complexity across the entire supply chain and hence uh, what is very important is to have an end to end visibility of the entire supply chain. And in the context of an end-to-end -end visibility, um, why it is important is A, because we want to take the decisions in a quick and agile manner, but also we want to ensure that the financial planning or the supply chain integrated planning also happens in a way which is very responsive to the external changes which is happening all around. Right? So in that context, Nitin, I just wanted to uh, get some of your thoughts sure. uh, in terms of uh, what are some of the challenges and issues you are seeing. Uh, from your experience of having uh, dealt in this in this subject with many of uh, of our clients. So th thanks, Sujita. I think that's a very relevant challenge that most of our clients face. So when we look at end-to-end -end visibility, there are two necessary aspects within that. One is the right information at the right point to enable a timely and effective decision making. Second aspect is single source of truth. Generally, what we are seeing across companies is the data is actually stored or available in disparate systems which are not talking to each other and there might be a version control issue itself with respect to the recency of the data. So, so the data not talking to each other is the is biggest, biggest challenge uh, in the disparate system and necessary first step is really have all of these integrated so that there is a common data single source of truth that can be enabled and it's available when, when needed for decision making. So in this context, Susita, how do you think uh, this can be addressed, how other companies are trying to uh, solve this visibility issue uh, from the decision making perspective. No, sure Nitin, I think you highlighted some of the very pertinent issues which some of our clients are facing today. And the way we are looking at the whole thing and we are calling it a supply chain control tower, which effectively means that you are looking at the entire supply chain from a, from a central perspective, end to end. Uh, we are talking about four different types of pillars of the supply chain. The first one is, uh, is just, the, just the visibility of the supply chain and that visibility of the supply chain can come in from uh, a set of reports and dashboards and something which is very online uh, and that is a starting point because without that we do not even know where we are. right? But it does not stop there. The second pillar after the visibility comes in the form of uh, exceptions because um, you want to know where you need to make an intervention whether if there is a change in the disruption or there is a change in the demand or there is a change in the supply or there is a change in the logistics, you immediately need to know. So exceptions become very important for you. So that is the second uh, layer after that. But you do not even stop at that. The third thing which we talk about is the integration because we know that supply chain is not about your organization only. It is also about having data coming in from right. multiple other sources, external sources from your suppliers, from your stakeholders, from the warehousing units, etc. So how are we integrating all of that mm -hmm. and ensuring that the ecosystem is working in, in, in a way, right? And then the last bit is the automation. So we know that supply chain is 24 by 7. So we need a fairly robust system where decisions can be taken in an autonomous way going right. forward. And, and at least if not in a, in a completely um, all the decisions but at least a ma majority of the decisions can be done in a rule driven manner and that is where we are talking about starting ahead with some automation in the initial processes where we reduce some of these manual mm -hmm. activities which you mentioned about the excel sheets and all of that we can eliminate that uh, which are non value adding manual activities mm -hmm. but also we are trying to automate some of the decision making activities using the advanced analytics and AI and ML which adds to the flexibility and adds to the resilience of the entire process end to end. Th that is very, there is I think very good way of really positioning how the different components come together. Th thanks for that Sarita. I think when we are talking about this entire you know view uh, and how we are kind of architecting the entire um, uh, control tower from a supply chain perspective, mm -hmm. would be great to kind of understand some of the additional things which we would like to do. 
because we are looking at adoption, we are looking at how do you nudge people to right. use the system. You can build the most sophisticated system in the world, but people need to use it. Yeah. You're also talking about not just today's scenario, but future scenarios in terms of what needs to pan out, depending on what you see, your organization going forward, how you see the competition and the ex uh, economic landscape panning out. So what are some of those the initiatives which you are seeing happening in this so space? Very well said. I think in, in our experience, creating that visibility or having a system which is integrated system is just part of the solution. I think the, the real value comes when people start using the, the solution. And that's where I think in the, in the past, uh, many times that adoption has been a major, major challenge. So when we look at the change management aspect of enabling the tech-enabled solutions implementation, uh, is the, the two components that we typically, I think would be very helpful. One is the nudge component that you briefly talked about. And second is when the nudge happens, which is necessarily a trigger point, how the people are able to weigh in the options and make the right decisions. So I think those are the two components, nudge and scenario uh, capability of the solution. Nudge necessary is a, is a trigger, is a, it's an alert to a, a buyer or a, or a planner to, to, with respect to saying something is probably requires an attention. So generally what we develop, say for example, in a control tower is an alert getting generated, for example, when the inventory is expected to exceed the safe norm, or when a PO is getting triggered, although demand has uh, really dropped. So it's an it's a alert to the buyer uh, or a planner to say, do you want to review this? And when that alert comes, it initiates the action from the buyer or a planner in this case. Then they can use the scenario to say how much inventory reduction, how much reduction change in the PO quantity can understand, can have impact on my uh, ultimate service levels or on the inventory stock levels at the, at the warehouses or within the plant, which will make them do the trade-off decisions very effectively. So necessarily these two components are the enablers to much more go from descriptive system to a prescriptive system uh, and enable decision making on the go, uh, which, which necessarily is really driving adoption subsequently. So in that context, I think as we are talking of implementation, Sarita, what are the other considerations? Because I think one aspect is really enabling this solution, but how do we achieve sustainability in this kind of a solution? Right. So I think, uh, you know, when we are looking at uh, this entire framework of building a solution which gives an end-to-end -end visibility mm -hmm. of the supply chain, it's very important that we follow certain basic tenets of how we approach such solutions going forward. For example, to start with, stakeholder involvement or engagement is the starting point. Right. We know that supply chain is one function which cuts across multiple functions, sales and marketing, uh, logistics and distribution, production, procurement, and typically these different functions will have their own departments and own silos and own stakeholders and all of that, right? So when you're looking at an end-to-end -end view of the supply chain, it's very important that all these relevant stakeholders are uh, brought into the same yeah. common page and then you start with that because without that the end-to-end -end holistic view is not going to be possible. Mm -hmm. The second thing is that we need to begin with an end in mind which means that we need to specify what is it that we are trying to achieve and here uh, the general recommendation is that let's not try to do everything in a big bang approach but let us try to build uh, smaller incremental improvements in terms of what needs to happen in its step-by-step -step manner. So, so that is the second part. Mm -hmm. The third part is that with every such implementation or every phase which is uh, where the implementation is happening, we need to do a check in terms of whether that is really adding to the bottom line or really making a difference to the business. For example, if using this entire uh, visibility, I have been able to improve the accuracy of my demand forecast, then that is, is that helping me to improve my service levels and uh, reducing my uh, stock outs or reducing my inventory build up and all of that. Mm -hmm. And that is going to be a check which needs to be done on a regular basis right. on the basis of which you are actually going to communicate the benefits where people then get added on to this whole initiative and movement and the change right. management becomes a lot easier. So that's the third step. And the final step is that there is a continuous improvement which needs to happen. Even if you have built something, uh, there would be changes in the external environment. There will be changes in the way in which you are operating. So there has to be a continuous improvement which needs to happen in each of these initiatives. And that is something which needs to be built into the program itself. So it's not about finishing something. It is actually a journey which you embark upon and you hopefully continue in that, in that direction uh, and, and better the business prospects. Very well said. I think that last component is probably the most important in this. It's not a static one-time action, but it's a journey. And 
maybe every six months, every nine months, depending on the business complexity and the dynamism in the market, at what frequency you review what you set up and then make refinements so that it remains live as, as it goes forward. So thank you very much, Nitin. I think this has been a very, very engaging conversation. Thanks a lot. So as we all saw that uh, we discussed about the aspects of uh, why this end-to-end -end visibility is important, uh, what are some of the basic frameworks of a supply chain control tower, uh, what are some of the challenges we need to keep in mind while embarking on this journey, and last but not the least, what are the step-by-step -step, uh, changes or improvements or activities an organization need to uh, undertake so that this particular initiative is sustainable and adds value to the business. Thank you.